Hey, good morning. Ben here with uh, Studio on the Lake. This is a small owl that I've been working on for a couple weeks. He's got a little bit of a story to him. Um, but he's going to go on a lamp or something along those lines. I got to admit, I wasn't real happy uh, with the way he was turning out. You can see the pattern. He's kind of squat and, and whatnot. I only had one view of it. Uh, but it, it turned out all right. But there was a trick in it later on. on that. And you won't get to see that in the first video, but the second video make it look a little bit better. But all in all, um, I would call this successful, but uh, not completely happy with it. Here's the old DeWalt. Get a little bit of rough shaping. It happens to have a terrible pad on it right now. I do have some uh, some new ones, 36 or 50 grits, typically what I run off that, fiber pads. And I actually do hold it in my hand there. And I knock on wood, never uh, ground my finger or hand or anything along those lines. With a lot of pieces, the important part, especially on an owl, I suspect the eye is the best part. So we'll shape the eye and the beak and, and get that uh, put in there. I'll, I'll mention it now so you can see it as it goes along. Uh, the head turned out to be not quite as wide as, as I would have liked and, and initially it would work fine had the body been a, a little bit bulkier uh, but this guy turned out to be kind of long and lean and in the second video I, I'm not sure I haven't edited that out yet but I I did at some point cut his head off his body and take about an inch out of the middle and then uh, glue it back on because he was just kind of long and lean and what I was really going for was a squat thing It's a micro carver, that's one of the old ones from PL Enterprises. It's a combo set. Go back and take a look at my other videos, it'll show that in there. I, I, I'm going to do another one at some point in the future here, but this, this one's about 20 years old. 30,000 RPM. It has a uh, medium diamond uh, ball flame, I believe they call those on there. I like to use the balls and the ball flame. Had two big old uh, eyes in there. Those are Tohican glass eyes. I, I buy quite a few of them and stick them around. If you're really going to get specialist on this, uh, there are owl, actual owl eyes that have a uh, larger pupil and less around the outside. They kind of got veins and such in them. Uh, but these will work for what we're doing here. I cut the socket out and the socket is uh, just slightly deeper than the eyes and, and then I'll put it in there with some uh, epoxy putty, uh, woody putty is what I've been using, wood, ep wood putty is what I've been using for years and years and uh, fortunately nowadays you can just pick it up at any hardware store. Let's just speed it up three times. All told, this guy, uh, two different sessions, probably took uh, three or four hours to do. He almost didn't get finished because I was really kind of disappointed with the, the, the way it was starting to look after the body and the head were starting to come together. I, I'm still, like I said, not real pleased with it, but uh, it does, does the trick. I would certainly uh, redo it. I have plans to do a full-size owl, uh, autonomous, uh, all correct on that. This is that quick wood. Uh, this one has to be from JB. It all works kind of the same. There's what's left of it. It's a two-part putty epoxy. You uh, mash it up. It sets in about, oh, give or take an hour. Really starts to set up in, in 10 or 15 minutes, but you got quite a bit of working time. Make 
two balls or ball out of it, cut the ball in half so you got both sides. And I want a little bit extra that's going to squeeze out around the eye. You can use this stuff to sculpt eyelids and uh, various different things. They say it carves like wood and takes stain. Not true. I really can't burn it. I have to grind it. Uh, so I'm kind of careful with how I put this on. Uh, obviously a paint application unless you put it in there really tight. These happen to be fairly tight. And it does a really nice job of holding these glass eyes in. The good news is these, these eyes, uh, these big eyes here are probably $7 a piece. I don't know, I'm just guessing. But uh, if you don't like the project and you don't want to waste those eyes on that, you can actually carve around them and carefully because they are glass, paint it on the back and then pop them out and use them again. There's that squeeze out I was talking about. And as you can see, I, I use an old, not an old, an old dur knife, knife blade there. Stuff does get stuck to the blade and you, you'll end up uh, scraping it off and then resharpening that. There's a diamond ball. The ball is kind of nice because you can go in any general direction you want. It is uh, best if you don't hit that glass eye with the ball, you will put a scratch in it. Although I have found a, an easy fix for that is to get a hold of some finger, clear fingernail polish. It's a lacquer and just put that over top and let it flood and it'll fill the crack. Kind of like those windshield dudes that come and repair your stuff. There we go. Not unhappy with it yet. I, I kind of like it. Here's a little ceramic bit. These are the ones that I like to use. I can get a pack of, I don't know, 10 of them. These are German tohi or German ones, Proxima from Germany. And this is the last that I have of these. I, I've been trying to find them and I just can't find an American one that I, I like the looks of. These, these are probably, well, heck, last time I was in Germany was over 10 years ago. So I might have to make a trip when this uh, fiasco that we're dealing with right now is all over just to get a $5 pack of these things or several of them. They make white ceramic stones and red ceramic stones and various different ones and they just don't seem to do the trick as well as these older uh, cheap ones. That's a micro burner pen, it's a micro skew. Comes off my Ultima kit there. Has a burner on one side, the micro controller on the other side. And as you heard me say before, I have two of those now uh, having gotten one for Christmas a couple years ago that is the upgraded version of the original has a 40,000 RPM handpiece and I, I tend to run the coarser bits on that and then the finer stuff on my older one that's a, the 40,000 that's blue versus the black this is a cuts all uh, medium cuts all and it uh, it hogs away wood pretty good So in the development of this, this, this character, like I said, it only had a one-dimensional pattern. Uh, looked at it on the web, saw a squat little good-looking owl. Thought, uh, time to be, be a nice time to do a little mini owl video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead. You, you notice I put a new intro in, into the channel. And it, uh, I didn't want somebody to think that, hey, this is a one-off wood carving video. There, I probably, I don't even know the number, probably 65, 75 uh, videos in there now. The channel's been up for just a little, a uh, couple of weeks over a year. Uh, thank everyone who's been subscribing to it. There's a lot of good folks out there carving. Uh, you can go over and look at Sten at Sticks. He does some beautiful work. Uh, Doug Linker, if you're looking uh, to how, how to work with a knife. I haven't seen Doug get into the power carving yet. I, I wouldn't suspect that uh, it'd be too long before he does that. A um, couple of goofy fellas going right now. I enjoy. I've done some stuff with uh, with Jordy. Probably do some stuff with Rob later. Uh, 
Jordy uh, Johnson at uh, Carving Fusion. He's a little bit more irreverent, but uh, got some fun stuff going on. And then uh, a guy, he I think he got into carving, just carve Rob. The two of them uh, are doing some stuff. They do a lot of wood spirits and such like that with uh, various different things. And theirs is uh, primarily power carving. I like to power carve because I got into this. It's the only way you can do the fine decoys. And oh, I shouldn't say that. You can do a decoy with a knife and chisel set. Uh, this is just easier. This is kind of like sculpting in clay versus uh, the stuff that, that if you check out Doug Linker, I've said that before, but Doug has an old, older style of carving where he works with a, a knife and uh, a, a lot of characters. And when you're doing a character, you're looking at the planes that you're trying to carve. You're, you're turning squares and uh, facets and that sort of thing uh, into a goofy cartoon character. This guy's getting his wing. His head's turned, obviously, to the side. Uh, ironically, these owls have a bird body, even though you wouldn't even, wouldn't even know it. Kind of, you would think songbird. Uh, here's where I'm starting to notice that the, the body is too small, the head is a little bit too small, and, and my proportions, there's a, about an, I'm thinking an inch more in the neck and the body that I don't like the look, so it's turning out kind of long and lean. As far as uh, what I'm doing later on, I, like I said, I cut the head off and I take about an inch out and I, I recarve a lot of that up in there. People will ask you as you get to the point where you're uh, starting either to sell these or give them away. Oh, wow, is this one, one piece of wood? And uh, sometimes yes, some, a lot of times no. In fact, you don't even want it to be one piece of wood. You want the grain to be going in the direction of the piece that you have going on there. Example, anything with legs or hands or an appendage that goes in the 90 degree angle from the other. That grain is weak right there and will break off. You want to uh, carve that appendage that sticks out with the wood grain going lengthwise on it. Uh, that's the reason they split wood in the old days for chairs. Uh, the wood splits right down there and you get some really fine Windsor chairs uh, out of oak typically or ash that uh, have phenomenal strength. That's just because the wood grain goes down through there. So defining the wing here, you got a couple of uh, different levels where the wings cover, or the feathers groupings cover over each other. Now, if you use your imagination, you can see uh, pretty big, what I think is a little bit out of proportion between the body and the head there. But I'll fix that later on. That doesn't affect uh, what you can see here, but that is in, in the second video that I do that. laying out center lines. These are not anatomically correct feather groupings. Just enough to make you think that I might know what I'm doing, but uh, your biologist that's been studying owls for years, or something like along those lines, you're, you're thinking, wow, this guy's really missed the boat. Those of you that uh, have been with the channel a while, you'll notice I'm starting to get better about being in frame on these videos and uh, the focus is doing a little bit better. I, I swapped lenses, I don't remember which one it was, uh, but uh, this is actually shot in a wider, it's got me in, sitting on my ass in my chair and, and then during the editing I bring that frame down and it, it does such nice work look at that detail that, that's actually shot from about six feet away on a camera pod and uh, it's probably taking a three foot square wide shot but I, I'm able to 
uh, run these down and get what I want without having to stare at the camera. One of the hardest things about doing these videos is uh, trying to stay in frame, working from a position where your noggin's not in the camera or your, my big old fat hand is not in the camera. Uh, the thing kind of needs to be in focus. There's nothing worse than trying to figure out what the hell somebody's doing and it's not in focus. So I go down and you, you can see I didn't 100% follow those pencil marks on there. <coughs> and then I outline them with a, a wood burner. You can do that with a uh, anything that cuts. Uh, I come back around with that ball gouge. And I, I'm just kind of getting a rough shape where the feathers lay over top of each other. Now, And I'm taking some of that coarse grinding off there. And I can do it really fast, as you see. That's not true. That's uh, Most of the times when I speed this up, it's three times faster than the normal. So that's going to be the end of part one. Uh, go ahead and check out part two for the rest of the stuff. And as always, subscribe. Uh, you guys are doing pretty good. We're getting up to the point where it's uh, worthwhile to start putting these videos out. There's my... At intro, exit, new one. You'll probably see a few more in the future. Hey, thanks again. This has been Ben with uh, Stew on the Lake.